Hey y'all, so today I'm going to be doing the Opposites book tag. I wasn't tagged by anyone, but I've been kind of wanting to do this one lately, so I just decided to go ahead and do it. I will leave a link to the original video down in the description as well. So as the tag says, each question has two opposite things and you pick a book for each thing. Question number one is oldest book versus newest book. And I took this more of as how long I've had the book versus how recently the book was published. For oldest book, I chose All American Girl by Meg Cabot. I've had this book since like elementary school. I think it came out in 2002 and I think I probably got it around that time. So I've had this book for a very long time. And as you can see, this is very well loved and well read. It's taped together, the corner fell off. I actually have an extra copy at my house um, just in case something even worse happens to this one. And for newest book, I chose A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. Not only is this the most recent book that I have bought, but it also was just released a couple days ago. Question number two is cheap versus expensive book. For cheap book, I decided to go with Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. I bought this, I think, for either a dollar or for 50 cents at a used bookstore, and it's in pretty good condition, and I also really actually like the cover. So yeah, cheap book. And for expensive book, I went with the obvious yet very true choice, which was Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. I originally pre-ordered this and had a discount on it, but my family was actually traveling the day that it was released, and I would have to wait until I got home to actually get my copy of the book. And I refused to waste an entire traveling day that could have been spent reading this book, and so I found a full price copy at the airport and I bought it and I read it the entire day and it was totally worth it. And this is probably the most I've ever spent on a book, honestly. I think a maintenance guy is here. Let's see. Okay, now that the maintenance guy is gone, <laughs> let's resume. Question number three is male and female protagonists and I'm gonna take this as my favorite male and female protagonists. So for favorite male protagonist, I chose Sage from the Ascendance trilogy. Now I did just read this trilogy, but Sage is probably my favorite male main character that I've ever read. He's just so sarcastic and snarky and sassy and he does what he wants to do and I absolutely love that about him. He's just really freaking cool. And for female protagonist, I chose Kath from Fangirl. I 100% relate to Kath. Like, she is a total introvert and she would prefer to just stay in her room all day rather than, like, going out and doing things and she spends a lot of time on the internet or writing her fanfiction and I just, I totally relate to Kath. And I love Kath. Question number four is read quickly versus took forever to read. And I'm gonna do this relative to the page length because obviously like a 700 page book is gonna take a lot longer to read than like a 200 page book. So for a book that I read quickly, I chose City of Heavenly Fire by Cassandra Clare because I read this like 730 something page long book in a day. I was doing a reading challenge and I was supposed to finish all of Cassandra Clare's books except the Shadowhunters Codex within the month of May and it was the last day of May and it was about a week after this book had come out and I just buckled down and I read the entire thing in one day. And for a book that took forever to read, I chose The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. And it's sad because this book actually has less pages than City of Heavenly Fire. And yet it took me the better part of a month to finish it. It wasn't because I wasn't enjoying the book or because it was slow or boring. It was just because I was really busy and I didn't have a ton of time to read. And so this kind of got pushed to the back burner and it took me the majority of a month to read this. Question number five is ugly cover versus pretty cover. So for ugly cover, I chose The Pilgrims of Rain by DJ McHale, which is the eighth book in the Pendragon series. I talked about this a little bit in my Pendragon discussion. I will leave a link down in the description if you wanna check that out. Um, it's discussing this entire series. But um, I cannot stand this cover. I hate it so much. Basically all of the books in this series have Bobby Pendragon, the main character, on the cover. And as he ages, his image on the covers also ages. And up until this book, they did a really great job making him look like the exact same person, just slightly older. 
However, on this cover, he just looks completely different. DJ McHale himself even hates this cover and calls it Bobby the Blue-Eyed Reindeer because the trees in the background make it look like he has antlers and he has blue eyes on this cover even though he has had brown eyes on all the other covers. I mean, look at Bobby on book seven versus Bobby on book eight. Like, that's not the same person. Like, they don't look like the same person. And for pretty cover, I went to my standby all-time favorite and that is A Million Suns by Beth Revis, which is the second book in the Across the Universe trilogy. Both of the first two books in this trilogy have absolutely gorgeous covers. Across the Universe's cover is also amazing, and it used to be my favorite, but I like this one better now. Um, but then they changed the cover for the third book, and Shades of Earth is nowhere near as pretty. Look at this. I could have chosen this for an ugly cover, but I didn't because I hate the Pendragon cover more than this, but this is just terrible. It went from this to this. I hate it. But ignoring the last book in the trilogy, this cover is absolutely gorgeous. Question number six is American author versus international author. I mean, I could pick like any book ever for this. Like what even am I going to choose? I mean, like any book ever would fall under this. So for American author, I decided to go with Ernest Cline because he is from Texas and that's where I lived when I graduated from high school. So yeah, I mean, I have a bajillion American authors, so I decided to pick one that's a little close to home. And for international author, I decided to choose Samantha Shannon because she is from England. And right now I am obsessing over the Bone Season series because I really want to read the second book. I'm so ready to read the mime order, it's not even funny. Question number seven is thick book versus thin book. And for this, I'm just gonna go with the thickest book on my shelves that I've read and the thinnest book on my shelves that I've read rather than like my favorite thick book or my favorite thin book. So like most people, the thickest book on my shelves that I've read is Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Um, yeah, it's like 800 something pages. And I'm kind of ashamed to say that this is the thickest book that I've read because I love big books. The thinnest book on my shelves that I could find that I have read is Anthem by Anne Rand, which is absolutely tiny. Like, it, it speaks for itself. Question number eight is fiction versus nonfiction book, which is another of those categories that is way too broad. For fiction book, I decided to go with a fiction book that I'm most looking forward to getting to, and that of course is The Mime Order by Samantha Shannon, which has been at the top of my TBR for who knows how long. I've had it for a month and I still haven't read it, and I just am so ready to get to it. And for nonfiction book, I just decided to choose my favorite nonfiction book, and that is Unsaid Things, Our Story by McFly. McFly is my favorite band, and they published this book back in 2012, and it just basically talks about the history of the band. Question number nine is romance book versus action book. I'm really struggling to think of a book that is pure romance. I don't have many of those. So I found a romance book, and that is The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. And yes, that is a signed copy sticker. For action book, I just decided to choose the most action-packed book that I could see on my shelves, and that was The Soldiers of Hala by DJ McHale, which is the 10th book in the Pendragon series. Like I've said in the past, this book is the biggest in the series, but it is basically just like one big battle and it's just really fast paced and action packed. So question number 10 is happy versus sad, but I feel like this question can kind of reveal some spoilers. So I'm just gonna choose books that make me feel happy or sad. That doesn't necessarily mean that these books are happy or sad. So for happy, I decided to continue the Harry Potter theme that's been going on in this video and to choose Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Out of all the Harry Potter books, this one is the one that makes me happiest because it's the most nostalgic for me. This is the only book that I've ever gotten at its midnight release, and every time I read this book, it just feels like I'm returning home. It's the Harry Potter book that I've read the most times, and so I'm most familiar with it, and every single time I read it, it just brings back a wave of nostalgia, and it's just so familiar, and that's why this book makes me so happy. And for sad, I decided to go with 13 Reasons Why by Jay Asher. Basically, a girl named Hannah has committed suicide and she has left these 13 tapes to 13 people and says that they are the 13 reasons why she committed suicide. And 
this book just makes me cry every single time I read it, but I absolutely love it, and it's a beautiful, beautiful book. And if you haven't read this book, just read it. It's so beautiful. Okay, so that is it for the Book Opposites tag. I'm not going to tag anyone because I feel like most booktubers have already done this. However, if you haven't already done this tag, please do it and like leave your videos down in the description so I can watch them. As always, I will leave a link down in the description to my vlog and to my Goodreads. Please add me as a friend on Goodreads. I'd love to be friends with all of you. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. Thank you so much for watching. Bye! The Order of the Phoenix.